Hi. So now you've gotten a chance to interact with each other in the discussion forum. And now I want to give you some more content in the form of videos, uh, several video lectures that I'll be preparing and uh, delivering to you uh, in the next few days. So this video lecture is about the implications for web app development and the general implications for the iPad for library science and information science. Let me show you some of the important uh, resources that have come out, links that have come out in the media since the iPad was launched uh, earlier in the year. Okay, the first thing I want to do for you is show you the process uh, that I went through when I got the iPad to begin with. Most of you have an iPad, but for those folks who don't have it, I want to show you the entire process from beginning to end. From when I first got the package uh, via UPS on April 3rd, and you can see that they went through uh, from Shenzhen, China, uh, Louisville, Kentucky, and then finally to me. Okay, so I got the box from UPS and open it up. And there's not a whole lot in there. It's just a, a white box with the iPad cover. Open that up. Took out the iPad. It's it's really small. I mean, it's it's felt a lot like an iPod Touch. It's got a plastic cover, and comes with the the syncing cable as well as the power bug. And the iPad takes a lot of power, so generally you want to charge off the wall. The documentation is completely minimal very very light so it's uh, wrapped in plastic I unwrap the plastic case and you can see it's got the uh, microphone headphone jack the power button and then it also has you can see the Apple logo there had the power button at the bottom iPad won't start up unless you sync it with a computer that's a, a big weakness I think so that's the sync cable I plug it into iTunes. It's got a, a sync with iTunes. So iTunes is a music purchasing site. So you register your iPad and then you set it up on the iP iTunes store. The terms of service, many, many, many pages. And you can save the license to your hard drive if you want. I already had an existing iPad, Apple ID to uh, sign up with. And they market this mobile me system, free email system. I wasn't interested, so I clicked uh, not now. Now, one thing I did was to pull in all of my iPhone applications and audio as well. All the um, audio tracks that I'd loaded on the iPhone over the over time. Number of different backup versions, and I took the latest. So this is all of the music that I had on iTunes, and I brought uh, a lot of that in. Here's where I chose um, to bring in the apps. Mostly I was interested in the apps. So it's bringing in, uh, and universal access is pretty interesting. iPad has a lot of uh, access accessibility features. and. Um, it was asking me for, um, I had some applications that were a little bit special on the iPhone, so I didn't bring those over. So it's, uh, here's the iPad itself, 14, I, I bought the 15 gigabyte version. You can get up to, well, quite a bit. I bought the smallest. And then I'm choosing the individual applications that I wanted to bring over to the um, memory, to the hard drive on that tool, and also movies. So I brought over a number of movies, including a Pixar story, which I'll show later. So it had a, a really nice uh, keyboard, and that's the default background image. And you can change that. I changed that uh, later on. So I'm going to untether it from iTunes. Then you can see um, it's got a, an accelerometer, which tells it up and down, left and right, the uh, way that the thing is set up. Also, it's got swiping for a number of different pages. So you, you, you put these icons uh, in pages and then swipe between them. Here you can see I've launched the Safari browser. And I'm going to take a look at the Sliss homepage. So I click the uh, Google search window. 
and a keyboard pops up. Then I type in my search and I'm going to look for a SJSU SLIS. Choose it off the list and then you can see I get the Google page. I can also pinch and pull in order to zoom in and out. I'm going to go ahead and uh, choose and Google the uh, SLIS page and then search in the SLIS page for a second life. So I want to show you the video. Click return. So there's the video choice, the, the uh, website choice, and I head on over there. Now I can drag, pinch and drag to zoom in and out. I'm going to scroll down here to the bottom of the page and take a look at a map of the page. Pull back. So I double clicked in order to pull back to regular view. Scroll on down there. Click on the Second Life link to take a look at the Second Life wiki. And you can see there's a YouTube page. Now, a very important point, the iPad doesn't allow you to play Flash. So the YouTube Flash player sends you to YouTube itself, which then kicks out a QuickTime. So you're not actually looking at the typical YouTube uh, window. Let's take a look at a newspaper. So I went to USA Today, and USA Today has a, a special page built specifically for the iPad. And this is very important for us because USA Today built the um, page with a special page specifically for the iPad and, and the iPhone. Let's take a look at <clears throat> uh, National Public Radio. You can go here and choose your station. And again, they've built a, a purpose-built page for the iPad. That's important for us. Um, next, I'm going to go to the uh, ABC page and show you some television uh, television video. So if you go to I, the ABC, it's only available in portrait mode. So I'll put it in portrait mode here, and then you can see you can uh, click and drag on the individual uh, shows. That's the difference between a purpose-built, a native app, and just web apps. The first two were just web apps. Here we go, clicking and dragging to zoom in on the map feature. I think maps are quite powerful on the iPad. So you can choose the different views. Um, and here I'm doing uh, hybrid, so I'm looking at satellite video as well as aerial photographer. Here's my daughter. She's about four and a half in this image. She can, you can see, already click on individual parts of the interface and control it. So she's able to start up a movie now. I didn't really have to show her any of this. She sort of poked around and, and learned the controls. So that's a quick overview of the iPad operating system. Uh, I unboxed it for you, showed you how to launch it in iP uh, iTunes, and then we look at some of the applications. Notice that we looked at uh, web apps that were built using CSS, and then we looked at two native applications built in Coco which were the NPR application as well as the USA Today app. And then we looked at the maps, which is just part of the regular operating system. So that's a nice overview, orientation overview of the iPad in general, really meant for the folks who don't have an iPad and who wanted to see overall uh, the features. A lot of those are not visible in the simulator. So.